Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be testing Avast Free Antivirus versus Ransomware. This is going to be a really interesting test. We're going to do it several ways. So first we're going to check how it does with all the shields turned up. But then we're also going to check how it does with just its behavior blocking. So as you can see in this folder, we've got 56 ransomware files. They're essentially some of the most infamous threats of the last five years. So the first part of the test is going to be making sure that it detects all of these with at least its signatures. That's what you would expect. I don't want to see any misses there. The second part of the test is going to be checking out how robust are its defenses with regards to behavioral blocking so that if a new ransomware with a similar architecture or mechanism came out today, how would it fare? Now, in order to automate the execution of this, as usual, we will be using our star here at TPSC called Malix. It's an automation tool. All of this ransomware sits in a network drive and we're going to directly execute it from the network location, which is Z shared. And Malix is going to do that for us with a small time delay and it's going to produce a complete report. Is real-time protection turned on? I will show you that it indeed is. If we go into protection, core shields, as you can see, everything is turned on. Avast is fully equipped and ready to deal with this. Let's see if it can. All right, we're getting alerts as expected. Things are being moved to the virus chest, which is Avast's effective name for quarantine. So far, so good. We're at 70% with a detection of 100%. And the test is nearing completion. I really like the speed of execution here. So we've got a final proactive detection of 100%. All of these files were blocked, but that is to be expected. Keep in mind, this is some of the biggest threats from the last five years. If you're a relevant AV product, you really want to be on top of this. We still have the shield chiming in, so I'm just gonna mute the system. So everything looks good. Now we're going to proceed to the next part of the test, which is going to be a bit more interesting. So I'll open up a vast and we will turn off the file shield, which is essentially their scanner. We will still have the behavioral shield turned on. We will also have the web shield and everything else. We'll just turn off the file shield and then repeat the test with the same ransomware files. For those of you that are new to the channel, you might be wondering, why am I doing this? What's the point of testing it without the file shield? I'll explain. So the way an AV program usually works is there are multiple layers of defense. One of the first layers of defense is having a lot of manpower and resources in the form of malware analysts, which are going to be people like me who are out there looking at malware, hunting for new threats, or going through public lists of malware, and adding custom signatures for it, or tweaking their engine to make sure that they detect all of those files and blacklist them. This is great, as long as you know what you're dealing with. But if there is a new threat that some customer sees for the first time, it does not help until your malware analyst can go through that file. Now one way for me to test the behavior shield directly would be for me to find files that are so new that Avast has not seen it. But given the network that Avast has and the number of users that Avast has, that is virtually an impossible task. And even if I do happen to discover a new threat, I only have a few hours of time to test it before Avast and other AVs catch up and start adding it to their database. And honestly, in a case where I do come across a random new file that AVs don't detect, I do share it on Twitter so people can pick it up and add it to their signatures because we want people to be protected. So the purpose of this part of the test is to simulate what would happen if we had threats like these hitting the system without any pre-existing blacklist rules to block them specifically. So anything that they have that is generic to the behavior of programs or for ransomware in general should still work. That's why we're leaving the behavior shield turned on, but we're preventing it from just looking at the file, comparing it to its signatures and saying, oh yeah, this is a known ransomware, stop. So in my opinion, this is a perfectly valid way of testing the readiness of an AV program to new threats. Now, in the meantime, I will also open Task Manager so you can see the CPU usage while we're executing the ransomware again. Now, this time, I don't expect a 100% detection, but I'd be happy if it was 90 or more and if our files were not encrypted. That is what I'm looking for here. So once again, we will run Malix, which will automate the execution of all of our ransomware from the network location. 
So again, I'm not disabling the shield and moving the files onto the system. The files are on network location. We're directly executing them through the script as an attack vector. Let the test begin. Okay, so far not so good. We're sitting at a proactive detection of about 30% and it looks like our system is completely overwhelmed. Now, Avast it seems. Hmm. Just making sure that we did have um, the behavior shield turned on. Yes, we do. And now we're starting to see detections. So one of the ransomware, Armage and Echo, they're being blocked and they're moved to chest. So IDP generic, so IDP stands for identity protection here, which is the behavioral protection that Avast inherited from AVG when they took over. It's nice to see that they've integrated this into their product. Cerber is also detected here. So we are seeing quite a few detections, but unfortunately, it does not seem like um, that was able to prevent our system from being completely overwhelmed. Let's see if our data was protected to any extent whatsoever. If we take a look at our documents, that is not true. Our files are encrypted. I will try and open these just to show you um, in case it's just an extension change or something like that. But that is not the case. As you can see, <laughs> this, is, this is as much recognizable as the rest of the system is as a functional Windows system. If we take a look at our pictures, again, all of this is encrypted too. This is not good news because it suggests that if you were to be hit by a ransomware that's completely new, that the file shield could not protect you against, this is what would happen. Now we're going to take a look at the actual report for the test because now we do have reporting. So even though it seems like PowerShell was uh, terminated and we can't really look at the detection rates, I will try to pull that up using my Malik superpowers now. So if we go into the shared folder, so you can see all this stuff is encrypted, but we do have our Malix log. And if we open this and take a look, you can look at every single file and what happened. So some of these, as you notice, were blocked, but the majority of them were missed. If we scroll down, we can see the final proactive detection was 28.26%. And we didn't even get to the end of the test, so we had 46 files execute and 33 were missed out of those. So the test was stopped before it could execute all the files. So there you have it. Those are the final results. As you can see on the system, um, it's not really operational. We've got multiple ransomware and ransom notes popping up on the screen. If this was a new ransomware attack, your data is gone. And I know I did turn off the file shield and you might say, well, if the file shield was turned on, this would be protected. Again, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with depending on your file shield or there's anything wrong with using blacklisting as your first line of defense. But is that a robust and sophisticated defense against modern ransomware? Not really, because if a new sophisticated threat were to come out today, most likely the first customer seeing it would end up with a system similar to what you're seeing right now. Yes, eventually it would be blacklisted, but by then for the targeted victims, the damage would already be done. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Also, I am offering cybersecurity services as a company right now. Feel free to reach out using the business email. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. That helps me out massively. Thank you so much for watching. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.